Welcome to the Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. I'm Sage and today's guest is Mr. Drago Stansiu. He's the founder and CEO at Grayscale AI. The AI industry is estimated to expand from 47.47 billion in 2021 to 360.36 billion in 2028 at a CAGR of about 33.6% for the forecast period. And Grayscale AI is building a next generation AI vision for automotive, aerospace and robotics using neuromorphic AI. Dragos believes that this technology will transform the automotive, aerospace and manufacturing industries. And today's guest will share more valuable insights with us. So excited to bring to you live today Mr. Dragos, Stancy, the founder and CEO at Grayscale AI. Welcome to the show. Hello, Sage. Thank you very much. Excited to be here. Yes, lovely to meet you. And we want to find out more about this expanding industry and what you're doing in it. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the vision behind Grayscale, please? Sure, my pleasure. So the company is inspired by uh, my research while I was in academia. Essentially, I was looking at making robots smarter by using a new type of camera called a neuromorphic camera or an event-based camera. We were looking at improving robot navigation on drones. And to define the term neuromorphic computing is simply put mimicking how the human brain processes information and putting that into a chip. So I, I realized that I can apply my knowledge and neuroscience to process the data from this camera and create new brain inspired, truly brain inspired algorithms for robots. So I like to say that we are at the intersection of computer vision, robotics, and neurocomputation. That is amazing to hear, and thank you for breaking it down in plain language for us to understand what you do, because I'm sure it's quite complex. So you recently won $100,000, or should I say £100,000, of grant funding money from the UK government to test your neuromorphic vision on the automotive test beds to improve autonomous car safety. This sounds incredible. Can you please tell us more? Sure. So yeah, we were indeed fortunate enough to have the backing of the UK Gov. Um, the grant allows us to be the first in the UK to test neuromorphic vision with these state-of-the-art testbed infrastructure that um, England is so kind to offer. So we were doing experiments on the busy streets of London, but also uh, on these specialized with the specialized equipment, basically testing how our system copes on, with detecting vulnerable road users such as pedestrians or cyclists. So we have targeted key safety scenarios where existing solutions do not work very well or pretty much fail. That sounds great. So just so we can understand a little bit better what you've uh, essentially been working on, is it similar to the cameras on cars, the sensors that when you are reversing, they start beeping when you get close to another object? Is, is that similar to what you do or are working on? So something like that. So imagine your uh, braking system when you go around the road and then suddenly a pedestrian pops up in front of you and then the car stops, brakes. Well, that braking system does not work 100% of the time, especially at nighttime. You might not be able to detect a pedestrian. So basically, we are targeting those scenarios where your braking system does not work. Wow, that sounds incredible, and I'd love to hear more about that. So, dormant for years, apparently, neuromorphic vision sensors industry has now mm -hmm stage to come back in recent months as autonomous driving vehicles are becoming more a thing of the now instead of something in the future. So what has propelled this momentum and what could be in store for the industry? Sure, so in my opinion, the fundamental driver that really pushed this technology out there is uh, the data, data growing at an incredibly fast pace. So I've been talking with uh, some enterprises and they say that just the cost to transfer the data from an autonomous car to the cloud, we're looking at millions of pounds, euros, name your currency of choice, just to get the data from the car to the cloud and to analyze it. So that is... like Intel has a pretty, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say that's incredible. Please yeah. keep going. 
Sure. Yeah. So there's like a prediction from Intel that says that by 2025, there will be about four terabytes of data recorded just by one autonomous car. So it, it would be unfeasible to get four terabytes of data to the cloud and analyze it in real time. So people are looking at solutions to analyze that data at the edge closer to where uh, the data is recorded by the sensors without sending it to the cloud. So just so we are keeping up with what you're saying, would that involve some sort of machine learning uh, analytics? Correct, yeah. So it's all these AI GPUs. Um, we want to transfer those models to run on your Mortic chips, which uh, run way faster and much more uh, efficiently from a power point of view. So we run the collect the data and analyze it on the neuromorphic chips, on the car, on the drone, wherever there's a robot. Wow, thank you so much for sharing this information with us because we really need to start being aware of these breakthroughs in technology. And Dragos, please let us know, does this technology also work with satellites as well? Is it somehow connected? Yes, indeed. Actually, last month, they, um, not me, I would like to say it was me, but it was not me. Uh, researchers have been able to put a neuromorphic camera on the ISS, the International Space Station, which is pretty amazing. So they're using it to monitor like space debris and satellites, how they move around uh, Earth. So it's, it's satellites, for example, is a use case where you really need low power. You can't afford to put a GPU on a satellite. There's simply not enough computing power and battery to power that. So if you can come in with something that works fast and at the low power use, uh, that's the ideal use case. Amazing technology. Thanks a lot for giving us that information. So as we start to wind up the discussion now, can we talk a little bit more about recent advancements made in computational neuroscience and robotics that have impressed you the most? Sure. So I think the... There are many research groups and academics that are working on neuromorphic for which we should be all very grateful. They did the initial bets on this, and now startups such as mine are looking to bring this kind of technology from the academia slash R&D space into the market. Um, I would say that uh, the Human Brain Project, which was funded by the EU, um, has been instrumental because it allowed the development of new neuromorphic chips, such as Spinnaker or Brain Scales, to allow computational neuroscience simulations to be done at scale. Um, Otherwise, I would say the main developments were towards benchmarking and data sets and simulations. But again, we have not yet seen a killer application of neuromorphic technology de deployed in a real world environment. So it's, it's still a bit early days, but uh, you know, watch this space for the next couple of years or so. I think there will be, everybody will be talking about neuromorphic. Yes, I think it's important to keep up with the trends and perhaps the future trends so you can know when to release your amazing products as well. And talking about what you do, what are the plans for Grayscale AI for 2022? Yeah, so we're a small team, so many, many things to be done in the next year. Um, I think now we are part of Techstars, Industries of the Future Accelerator. Uh, we're in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and we're building some really amazing partnerships with the, the local um, corporations and organizations such as the University of Tennessee, Oak Ridge National Lab and the Tennessee Valley Authority. They have some amazing neuromorphic computing groups and we're really keen to collaborate with them. Uh, otherwise, yeah, growing the team pretty much uh, doing the, the basic problem of a startup. Yeah. Getting the talent and the pilots going with the corporations and so on. Well, that's great to hear, Dragos, and it's a very exciting space that you're working in. Thank you so much for telling us more about this global and emerging industry, and we do appreciate your time today. Likewise. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. If you have just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion about the future technology of robotics and what Mr. Dragos Stanciosa, founder and CEO at Grayscale AI, is doing for the industry. Please catch the full interview at Kalkine Media's YouTube channel and keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market updates. As we say, stay apprised and invest wise with Kalkine.